Hey guys, it's Poxpro. Welcome back to another video. Today in Fallout 76, I'm going to be talking about mutations, how to get them, the recipes, and pretty much how like the perk cards work with it, and how you can add mutations to your build, and how affordable it is. So to get started, I'll go ahead and talk about how you can actually obtain mutations, and then later on in the video, we'll talk about what mutations I recommend, and like what are all your options. Um, so the first method to obtain mutations is to join the Enclave and unlock access to the Enclave base, and then you can actually buy um, mutation recipes. Um, this route is a little bit on the pricier side. It'll cost a quite a bit of caps to actually buy the recipes, and then you can start crafting the serums, and then you can craft the serums for your own use or to sell it in a player vendor, uh, like your player vendor. And so that's what some people do, you know, they bought the recipes, they buy maybe a couple of the serum recipes, and then they will start making like batches of serums and just put them in their player vendor to sell to other players. So that is one way to obtain serums, although I don't recommend it unless you actually want to sell serums. Like I wouldn't recommend going this route to give serums for yourself. Like if you only want serums for yourself, it's a lot cheaper to just um, go around to the player vendors and actually be the one that's buying the serums from people who have bought the recipe. Uh, and usually it's like 300 caps, you know, three to 400 caps per serum. So it's not too expensive. And honestly, like you can keep server hopping and vendor hopping until you find somebody who's selling like an array of serums. If you need serums, there is somebody who is usually in my live stream chat and is on PC who sells a lot, I think all the serums. So if you ever need serums and you're on PC, just hop in a live stream chat and join the world. And um, if that person is there, you'll be able to just buy serums from their vendor. But in case you are interested in buying the serum plans, I'll go ahead and show you where it is in the Enclave. At the Enclave, which is near the White Spring Bunker or inside the White Spring Bunker, you can just use the ID card reader. Um, if you aren't able to get past this door, that most likely means you aren't part of the Enclave, in which case uh, you'll have to join the Enclave first. And I'll go ahead and most likely be making a guide on how to join the Enclave and how to be a Enclave General. So I'll go ahead and add that to the description once that video is made. But for now, you'll have to look for another source or guide. All right, let's use the vault door controls. All right, so once you're inside, you want to go ahead and go on to your left and take the elevators. And to find the vendor, we're going to go take a left right here. And then there's going to be a little room right here. So from the elevators, this is pretty much the path. And essentially, we're, we're looking for the science wing. So right here is the science wing. We're going to go this way. And this is production. So we're going to keep going this way down here. We've got the med bay here. And then we have communications, and then on our right is the science wing. And right here, we can go inside, and we go further into the science wing, into the genetics lab. And once we're in the genetics lab, we can go to the vendors all the way over here on the side. And here, you'll already see some of the serums, so we'll go ahead and go up to notes. And you can see all of the serums here. And these are all the serum recipes, and you can see that they are pretty expensive, which is why I don't recommend buying the recipes unless you are interested in selling uh, crafted serums, then in which case it's more like a business. But if you only want one serum for yourself, then this is the most expensive route of doing it. But yeah, so this is one method to obtain serums. And then I already mentioned the other method of just buying crafted serums from player vendors and just like server hopping and player vendor hopping until you find somebody that's selling the serum that you need. Um, so yeah, so now that we know how to get the serums, uh, let's go ahead and talk about what the serum options are and like all, all of their benefits and we will talk about like what I recommend and I'm actually going to refer to another website for this because it's a bit easier to understand um, so let's go ahead and head on over there all right so here we are on the nukes dragon website and I'll have this website linked in the description it's a really good perk making website it shows you legendary perks mutations addictions and all the perks in the game and it allows you to kind of plan out your build so let's go ahead and talk about the mutations and before I talk about the mutations I want to actually talk about two perk cards that I highly recommend for a for your build if you're going to be including mutations um, one of them is like a must-have and the other one is kind of kind of optional but I still recommend it so these are the two perks right here which is going to require at least five points 
in um, luck. And the first one is Class Freak. So the effects of your mutations are reduced by 75%. Really, really big because all mutations have negative effects and some of them can be a bit detrimental. But if you reduce it by 75%, it's no biggie. Um, it's not, you know, nearly as bad. So that's three points. That one's kind of like the optional one, but highly recommended. And then we have starch genes, which is really mandatory. Uh, essentially, starch genes makes it so that you won't get random mutations from radiation, and you won't lose your current mutations while starch genes is active. So this allows you to consume all of the mutations that you want, and then equip starch genes, and they kind of get locked in place and like you won't lose them you won't get random new ones um, keep in mind like if you want to ever add a mutation you need to have search genes disabled so take off search genes before you add mutations um, otherwise like if you consume a mutation while you have search genes on it's not going to do anything because search genes prevents you from getting mutations the another one that's actually really good in charisma is going to be called strange in numbers i highly recommend this one as well positive mutations effects are 25 percent stronger if teammates are mutated too so it's a little bit of a gamble you have to gamble that you know the three at least one out of the three teammates that you have on a public team are going to be mutated most cases they are going to be because a lot of people play with mutations so you'll just get a 25 percent benefit on all your mutations which can be pretty strong since mutation benefits are pretty good um, so these three cards I recommend having in your build if you're going to be running any mutations. And let's go ahead and take a look at the mutations themselves. Alright, so with these mutations, uh, we're just going to go from top to bottom. This is Egghead. You get 6 int and you lose 3 strength and you lose 3 endurance. But keep in mind that the int can be uh, you know, increased by 25% with strange in numbers. And then the strength and endurance reduction will be reduced by 75%. Like this is why we use those prick cards because it makes the mutation is just a lot better. So there's Egghead, which I think is just pretty good to always have. You know, any mutation build could use Egghead because it gives you plus uh, just free intelligence, which is good for XP. Then we have Eagle Eyes, critical damage plus 25%, perception plus four, but you lose four strength. This is really good for VATS builds that use a lot of VATS, you know, because crits are gonna be uh, used often in VATS and so is Perception. So this one is mostly for rifle builds or any build that uses uh, VATS. We have Bird Bones, Agility plus 4, Fall from Heights more gradual and you lose some strength. Bird Bones is really good in my opinion for um, I guess for I think almost any build. I'm using Bird Bones with Marsupial and it's been really really helpful because uh, when I'm in power armor I don't get the the uh, superhero landing animation as often, like pretty much rarely now, because Bird Bones makes you fall really slowly, so the animation doesn't happen. Um, but yeah, I will say that with Bird Bones, you kind of glide a little bit as you jump, so it might not be for everybody, but I think it's pretty good. So I like Bird Bones. Marsupial, you get carry weight, you get jump height, you lose some intelligence, but um, definitely a one of the most popular serums since the jump height is so nice. Adrenal Reaction is extremely good for bloodied builds. You lose a little bit of, of max HP, but weapon damage at lower HP is increased, which is pretty much what a bloodied build would want. So you stack a bloodied weapon with Adrenal Reaction and you're dealing a lot of extra weapon damage. We have Chameleon, uh, which is invisibility while unarmored and standing still. This one, I would say, is probably not a really good mutation. I don't think any build can really utilize this because you should always be wearing some sort of armor, in my opinion. So yeah, and like stationary is, is such a, a hard thing to do in this game, I feel like, to just stand still. Healing factor, health regeneration plus 300%, chem effects minus 55%. So if you use chems often, this one's not so good. Um, if you don't use chems, then healing factor is pretty good. And so like pretty much if you don't use any chems other than like stem packs, then I think this will work for you. If you use other chems to buff up, healing factor probably is probably not a good choice. I will say though that health regeneration or healing factor is bugged. So your fast travel will become bugged where you'll have to fast travel two to three times before it actually goes through. So I would be using healing factor myself if it wasn't for that fast travel bug. So right now I'm staying away from healing factor. Next we have speed demon. Movement speed is 20% faster, and you also get 20% faster reload speed. And the only downside is your hunger and thirst drain a bit more while moving. This one's really good, um, highly recommend it. You just get faster reload speed and movement speed, it's quite nice. Next we have scaly skin, you can sacrifice a little bit of AP to get some extra damage resistance and energy resistance, also highly recommend, can be used for like any build. Same thing as speed demon, could probably be used for any build. Next we have Grounded, energy resistance is plus 100, but energy damage is reduced by 50%. I don't recommend this one at all, at all unless you like absolutely don't use any energy weapons. 
because otherwise your energy damage will be tanked by a lot. Um, and like the energy resistance isn't really that necessary, so grounded I'd kind of stay away from. Um, Talons, punching attacks do 25% more damage plus bleed damage, but you lose some agility. Talons might be good for a unarmed build, but other than that, I wouldn't take that. Twisted Muscles, melee damage is 25% better, chance to cripple limbs, but you lose gun accuracy. This is good for a full melee build. Um, and keep in mind, like, mutations will stay on your character. They're not gonna be, like, per card loadouts where you can swap them out whenever. It's really, really inconvenient to swap out just one mutation because you have to clear out all your mutations in order to change your mutations. So it's like a full reset and then you have to buy back all the serums that you want instead of just being able to change one mutation. So if you go between a melee build and like a rifle build for um, for example, I still wouldn't recommend Twisted Muscles because Twisted Muscles would really mess up your rifle build. Whereas it might benefit the melee build, but I still don't think that's worth. So keep that in mind. Um, next we have Empath. Teammates take 25% less damage, players take 25% more damage. This one is pretty good. Uh, you will take a bit more damage, but your teammates take a lot less damage and um, I think I think it's a really solid card um, but maybe not for everyone and so yeah be a little cautious the empath but it can definitely be useful then we have herd mentality this one I highly recommend to have this one's like such a good one all special stats are plus two when grouped and all special stats are minus two when solo but you should always be in like a casual team or some sort of public team for herd mentality to stack and then stranger numbers will stack so it's like a really good wombo combo there you get like a bunch of free specials uh plus if you're bloodied you know you can have unyielding and you'll just get a bunch of free specials from your mutations and unyielding it's, it's super cracked uh next you have carnivore and herbivore you can only have one or the other so no diseases from meat and two times food bonus um, from eating meat products, but eating fruits and vegetables does not satisfy hunger and thirst. And then the opposite one is herbivores, so vegetables provide the, the double benefit and no disease. Eating meat does not satisfy hunger. So for these two, you really have to decide like what your diet is gonna be for the, in the game. Are you gonna be consuming like meat stews, eating like different steaks, and eating squirrel soup? Then go with carnivore. If you're gonna be doing the radish, uh, cranberry radish, and like uh, I think like brain soup or something and or like corn soup, you know that sort of stuff you need then herbivore but You know, it's kind of up to you on what you think is easiest to uh, the easiest food for you to cook and then you can kind of pick um, but like carnivore plus like strange numbers stacking um, I think you can get like up to like 12% extra XP bonus from Mama Dulce's meat stew when normally it's only five. So like that's how good carnivore can be. Um, and same thing with herbivore with like cranberry relish. Next we have Plague Walker. Poison aura scaling with your diseases. So the downside is you have to be diseased and that's it. So I have Plague Walker because there's really no downside. If I catch a disease, I get like a free strangler heart damage aura. <laughs> so I just have that. Uh, next is Electrically Charged, chance to shock melee attackers, small amount of damage done to player. I don't recommend this a lot, uh, I remember somebody in my live chat told me that they had Electrically Charged and they were a bloodied build and they found that like melee attacks were killing them really easily and it was because that you know you take damage from the melee attack plus you take damage from Electrically Charged so it's like extra damage. Um, and like sure it shocks the melee attacker but I don't think it's significant enough to really warrant getting Electrically Charged. Next, we have Unstable Isotope, medium chance to release a Radiation Blast when struck in melee, minor damage to player during the Radiation Blast. This is like pretty much the same thing with Electrically Charged, don't recommend it, same reasons, uh, and yeah. That's pretty much all of the mutations, and that's going to be pretty much it for this video guys, I hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please let me know in the comment section below. If you have any positive or negative feedback, also let me know, that way I can improve, and if I missed anything, let me know in the comment section as well. But otherwise, until next time.